I'm going to preach a sermon. This is one of those sermons that I, 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 I don't always tell you, but I try to tell you if I pull one out of the archives. And I pulled one out of the archives tonight. I, I, I remember the first time that I preached this sermon, I was a college student. And, and, and uh, God laid this on my heart. And, and, and for the last month or two, it's been churning in my mind again. And, and so while I pulled it out of the archives, it's not going to be exactly like it used to be. But God's been laying it and churning it on my heart. It's, this is not one of those that I flip through the book and went, oh man, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. No, this is one of those that God's been churning in my spirit. And, and so I want to preach tonight for a few moments on are you a leaf or are you fruit? And everybody should go, ooh. I, I, I'm, I'm going to give you a warning up front. We're going to get nitty gritty tonight. We're going to talk about who we are. And what are we doing? When Brother Josh was here the other night, and he was preaching, and, and I don't remember exactly what he said, but I remember my question in my mind was, what have I done for God? I think it's when he was talking about Elijah calling fire from heaven. Do I have the courage to stand among unbelievers and say, my God is the real God? Do I have the courage to even stand before unbelievers and say, my God can meet your need? But Elijah said, look, I'm going to stand for God. He had boldness. I want us to open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 21, reading verses 18 through 22 tonight. Reading from the New King James Version tonight. That's what the word of the Lord says. It says, now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry, that he here, being Jesus. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing but leaves. Found on it nothing but leaves. And said to it, let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How did the fig tree wither so soon, away so soon? So Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will, all, you will not only do what was done to this fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, Be removed and cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, Lord, I come to you right now and I thank you and I praise you for your power, for your anointing and for your peace. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity you've given me to share your word one more time. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity that you have placed in my heart, Lord Jesus, to, to birth a message, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I pray that you would allow me to have enough obedience and enough willingness Lord, that I speak forth the words that only you have planted in my heart. Lord, I want you to open the ears of every hearer and let them hear the power and the anointing of your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. As I began to read this passage of Scripture, I began to picture Jesus walking down the road and he was hungry. I, I love that. I could probably preach all night on the fact that Jesus was hungry. But Brother Josh just preached a few weeks ago, I believe it was, about uh, are we hungry. And, and, and so I'm not going to preach there, but, but Jesus was hungry. And when he went to the fig tree that he saw on the side of the road, he found that there was nothing on the tree but leaves. There was no fruit. There was no fruit. I don't have a fig. But I have an apple. He went to the tree wanting to get something to eat, and all he found was leaves. And as I begin to read that scripture, of course we go on and Jesus cursed the tree, and it withered away and died. But as I read that, my mind wondered. Has God ever made your mind wonder? And I'm going to blame it on God. Now sometimes my mind wonders because I have A, D, A, B, C, D, no, uh, I, I, I get distracted easy, okay, squirrel? Uh, but, I, but sometimes God makes my mind wonder. And as I was reading this, God began to let me think about other things. And all of a sudden I asked the question, what happens when God comes by a church 
and doesn't find any fruit. What happens if God comes to me and all he finds on me is leaves, but there's no fruit? I believe he'd do the same to me as he did to that tree. I believe he would do the same to a church as he did to that tree. Yeah. Yeah. And so it caused me to bring this question, are you a leaf or are you fruit? We, we live with leaves all the time. There's leaves everywhere. And, and I love leaves when they're green. I don't like leaves when they're brown and laying on my yard. And making my wife say, Tommy, you need to go rake. I don't like to rake. But leaves, some of you might even, but they're not all edible. And I'm not going to eat it. They're not going to. You, you ask me, and you ask me about food. I, I don't like green food. I, I, I'll eat a little bit of salad once in a while. But, but you, you want me to eat, you got to give me something that's got some flavor to it. You really want me to eat, give me some meat. But, but Jesus come up and he was hungry and he wanted food and all he found was leaves. So tonight I want to take a few moments. And I want to look at what a leaf is and what a bruised fruit is. I want to look at what a leaf is and what a fruit is. And then I want us to take inventory of our own lives. And decide, are we living life as a, as a leaf? Or are we living life as a fruit? What is a leaf? First thing I say about a leaf is a leaf is temporary. We know that leaves come up in the spring and go away in the fall. They, they rise up for a while, but then they, they die and fall until the next spring comes and they come to life again. They are temporary. In John chapter 15, beginning in verse 1, this is what the word says. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit... He takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. If you, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As for the branch, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch is withered, and they are gathered and thrown them, and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Here's what he says. I am the vine and you are the branch. But if you're not bearing fruit, my Father is going to cut you off. This branch was cut off a tree. You know what's going to happen to this branch now? It's going to die. It's going to wither. It's gonna. Our neighbor just trimmed some bushes, and in his yard there are branches with dead leaves on them. There's no life left in this. It cannot survive anymore. It's gonna be thrown to the side, and it's gonna be picked up to be thrown into the fire. When we understand that a leaf is just temporary, if if we're not bearing fruit, we're worthy to be cut off. We don't have a place. We're not there for a reason. We do not provide food. We have become temporary until the vine dresser comes and cuts us off and throws us to the side. I believe that we can follow this scripture just like we follow the other and say that if Jesus comes into the church and it's not bearing fruit, that the Father will come and prune and cut that church off and throw it into the fire. And, oh, now listen to this. If he comes to the church and it is bearing fruit, get ready for this. He's going to prune us. Amen. Woo, isn't that ugly? 
Well, God, I was very fruit, but you need to bear more fruit, so let me prune you. My grandmother had a plum tree in her backyard. And one year, my dad was there, and my grandmother said, All right, Lee, would you go out and prune my tree? My dad didn't know how to prune a tree. But somewhere my dad heard that if you cut every limb that points down off, the tree will go up. <laughs> and he cut every limb that pointed down off. That poor tree looked like a stick when he was done. He come in and it's his mother-in-law's tree. He says, Willie, I think I killed your tree. He was so, I'm so sorry I killed the tree. I, I just was cutting the thing and then I backed up and there's nothing left. But can I tell you what happened? The next year there was a crop. But the year following that, there was such a crop of plums on that tree that she called, she put ads in the paper for people to come pick plums. The weight of the plums were so heavy on the branches of that tree waiting to get ripe that we propped them up with tuba fours and in one night, three tuba fours snapped in two under the weight of the plums on those branches. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know what happens when we get pruned? Oh, it's scary. Oh, it makes us worry. It, it gives us fear and, and, and trepidation. But God says, I'm going to let you have more fruit. I had a lady in my church in Sinclair Lane. She lived in the city all her life. She got a house. Had a tree in the front yard. She had never had grass. Now she got a tree. And it was a little sapling. And she said she would refuse to prune it. Because she was afraid she'd kill it. When I was there, she had been there for 15 years. And that tree was about that tall. And she told me one night, I was over and she said, Pastor, if I'd have pruned that tree the way I was supposed to, said that tree would be 10, 15 foot tall. Yeah. But because I was afraid to touch it, I stunted its growth. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, there's some churches that haven't been pruned and their growth has been stu stunted. Mm. Come on. Leaves are temporary. We can quit worrying about what the leaf looks like. We're looking for the fruit. Leaves are temporary. Let's go on. Leaves eat, but they do not feed. A leaf, and, and, for you horticulturalists out there, there's a big word for you. I understand leaves provide protection, and they, they have a job. They, they, they convert sunlight into, into, into food. I understand all that, okay? But I'm talking about for human consumption here, okay? So I'm taking some liberties. But a leaf, while it can, converts the energy of the sun, it eats from the sap of the tree. It is fed by the tree, but yet it doesn't feed anybody else. Ooh, does that not sound like some church people you know? Oh, oh, I'm not saying they don't have some victory. I'm not saying they don't have some power, but they come into the church and they sit on their pews and they eat of the glory of God, but they never go out to feed anybody else. They become selfish and self-centered. They don't look for anybody else to feed. Philippians chapter 3 verse 17 through 19 says this, Brother, join me in following my example. And note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping. Listen to this. Paul says, I've told you about these people before and now I tell you about them even weeping and how sad this makes me. That they are enemies of the cross of Christ whose end are in destruction, whose God is their belly and whose glory is in their shame who set their minds on earthly things. There are so many people that come into the church and it makes me want to weep because their God is their belly. Their God is what can you do for me? Their God is what can you give me? How can you provide for me? Can you preach a message that makes me feel good? I 
I'm not here to preach messages to make you feel good. I'm here to preach messages that God lays on my heart. I hope you enjoy them. But I hope more that you grow by them. I'm here to fill you up so that you can go out and feed somebody else. I'm here to give you strength and give you power and to encourage you so when you walk out these doors, you can be the church of God reaching a lost and dying world. You can give them food. I'm not here to create leaves. I have a fear. I have a fear that we've got a church made up of more leaves than fruit. And not just this church. I'm talking about the church globally and in America. We're too busy. We're too busy counting how many people we got. And not busy enough counting how much fruit we got. What do we got to show for it? I would love to see this building full. Right now, if we saw this building full, it would be about fruit. Because if we saw this building full, it meant you would have found somebody to bring with you. But I'm not seeking a full building so I can count a bunch of people. When the building's full, I want to find ways to empty it out so we can fill it up again. What do you mean empty it out? I don't know. Maybe two services, three services, ten services. I don't care. I'll preach all weekend. Build a bigger building. I want to find ways that we can bring people in. Let me tell you something. Ten years ago, you were crammed like sardines into a little building next door. Amen. And you were sharing the gospel. And you were sharing the, the, the word of God. And that church was growing. Can I give us an indictment this morning, this evening? We moved into this building. And we can't get over 145. Oh, we've had special days over 200. But I've looked at the records from the time you built this building. This church will go up about 145, 150 and drop back down to 100. That's right. 145, 150. I'm going to tell you, it ain't the pastor because there's been three pastors that have seen it happen. Right. And there ain't nothing similar about any of us. That's right. Y'all, you that have been here through all three of us, you know that me and Pastor Ryan and Pastor Darnell, we, we're, none of us are alike. We're completely different. That's not a bad thing. I didn't, I didn't have the pleasure of knowing Brother Darnell. I would have loved to. I know Brother Ryan, and he's one of my good friends. But we know we're different. So what that tells me, it ain't the pastor. I can tell you there's churches in this city that are building and reaching people with the gospel of Jesus Christ above 150. It ain't the city. If it ain't the preacher, then it ain't the city. I'm not going any further. I'll tell you something. We've got to find how that we move beyond being leaves. That we sit here, we come in here and we let God feed us. We, we shout in these altars. We pray in these altars. We cry in these altars. But I am... I really thought I was going to be nice. I, I really am tired of coming in here and shouting and going out there and doing nothing. I'm not talking about you now. I'm talking about me. I'm tired of shouting here and going into, into the streets and not sharing the gospel. We've got to be searching for fruit. We cannot be satisfied for what God is giving us. We cannot be satisfied for how we feel. That's right. yeah. I go to that church because I feel Jesus. I want us going to this church because Jesus empowers us to feed somebody else. Yes. Leaves eat, but they don't feed. So what is a fruit? If leaves sit there and they, they're temporary and they eat, but they don't feed, well, what, what's a fruit? Mine says, what is a fruit? There it is. What is a fruit? Well, let's look and see. First thing, thing I see about a fruit is a fruit gives identity. What kind of tree did this come from? An apple tree. This is an apple. 
Came from, you know how we know it came from an apple tree? Because it's an apple. Or can a tree that Jesus cursed? A fig tree. What was he looking for? Figs. When we have fruit, our fruit gives us identity. Without fruit, we have no idea. I, I tell you, I can walk up to an apple tree and see an apple and go, that's an apple tree. I can walk up to a pecan tree and see some pecans on the ground. I don't know what they look like in a tree. I just know what they look like in the ground. And say, hey, that's a pecan tree. I can go up to a cottonwood tree that's got cotton things everywhere. I used to live by one of those. And say, that's a cottonwood tree. But a tree that doesn't have a fruit I'm familiar with, I want to know, what kind of tree is that? Now, I know some of you could tell me, but our fruit is what gives us our identity. Yes. I want us to have fruit in this church that gives us identity. The name of this church is Souls Harbor. If I understand the story correctly that I was told, that name is here because in a service there was a message and interpretation that said this church would be a harbor for lost souls. Our name is designed prophetically to be an identity of our fruit. Have we fulfilled the identity that God placed on us? We need fruit to give us identity. Mark chapter 16 verse 15 and 18 says, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, and he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they'll cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. I've come by here to tell you tonight that if we seek fruit, we will have fruit. Yes. He said, yes. these signs will follow believers. If these signs ain't following you, you need to pray some more. Cast out demons. Speak in other tongues. Take up service. Now you bring a stake in here, I'm going out there. I told you before what I believe about that scripture. When I lived in, in all my years growing up, I spent most of it in the Southwest where we had a lot of snakes. And most people got bit when they were in the snake's habitats. And when they didn't know the snake was there. I was once told that most snake bites happen on the back of the ankles. If people walk through the woods and they step over a snake, and the snake bites the back of their leg. And I believe that Satan is hiding like a serpent. Amen. And sometimes he strikes and we don't see him coming. Yeah. But we can reach down and take up that serpent that is the devil. And he don't hurt us a bit. That's right. When he tries to hide and attack us. It says they can drink anything deadly. They will not by no means harm them. You bring me a glass of arsenic and I'm going to let it sit on the table. <laughs> but I tell you what I believe. Most normal people that drink arsenic, they drink it because somebody put it in there and they didn't know it. I tell you, we live in a day and age where we have the gospel being preached to us from every direction and we don't know what's in them. That's right. Come on. We're listening to people on the radio, we don't know their theology. That's right. We're watching people on TV, we don't know their theology. We're reading books, we don't know their theology. Yes. And sometimes the devil is sneaking things in but when poison comes in by the power of the Holy Spirit, it washes right out. Yes. Because I've got a connection to the Word of God. Yes. My identity comes. Because I've got that power to cast out. I've got that power to endure. Yes. I, got, I can lay hands on the sick. And have you ever noticed that just about every verse we talked about has in some way talked about that when we pray, we receive? Yes. If we're going to be a fruit when we pray, we receive. Fruit gives identity. Fruit, fruit feeds. It feeds us. Look at this. It's so hard to eat, eat, eat and preach at the same time. 
When the day was now far spent, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and already the hour is late. Send them away, that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves bread, for we have nothing to eat. And he answered and said to them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And they found out that they had five loaves and two fish. Then he commanded them to make them all sit down in groups of the grass. So they sat down in ranks in hundreds and in fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed and broke the loaves, and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fish he divided among them all. So they all ate and were filled, and they took up twelve baskets full of fragments from the fish. Now those who had eaten the loaves were about five thousand men. Fruit feeds. Here we see where Jesus fed them literally. With blessing and power, he fed them. When we become fruit, we feed our families. I'm not just talking about food. I'm talking about we feed our families with the Word of God. We feed our co-workers. We feed those around us. We don't only give them shade, we give them food. Yes. We feed those people. Everybody we meet, we feed them. Fruit feeds. It allows us to give life sustaining life-sustaining power to everybody we come in contact with. Fruit reproduces. Inside this apple are seeds. Every seed can produce a tree. And every tree produces multiple apples. And every, inside every apple is seed that can produce multiple trees. They reproduce Leaves don't reproduce. Fruit reproduces. What the Word of God says in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I've come by here to tell you that if we're going to be fruit, we've got to be reproducing. Please understand, I'm not trying to yell at anybody. Can I tell you, it's not enough that we keep our seat full on Sunday. We need to be reproducing our faith. Our church is blessed because we're diverse. We have many age groups. I like that. I would not want to pastor a church that was all 20 something. There's no security. There's no stability. There's no wisdom in that group. I don't want to pastor a church that's all 30 somethings. There are churches out there that are starting and their only market is to reach 20s and 30s. That's all they want. I'm not interested in that. I like a church where we've got some people in their 80s that have been serving God as long as I've been alive or longer. I like that. Gives me somebody to look up to. Gives me somebody to give me wisdom. But I like the fact that we also have children. And Lord, we're getting a, a nursery department that's just blown. We need nursery workers desperately. We've got tons of nursery kids now. But let me tell you something. I love our matriarchs and patriarchs. They're not going to live forever. If the Lord tarries, we're going to have to say goodbye to them. We've already said goodbye to some people that we love. Have we reproduced ourselves enough that there's somebody there to take our place when we're gone? If 
in my life have two boys. One of them, Anthony, reminds me a lot of his mama. He's fair. She's when he's good. He reminds me a lot of his mama. When, when, when I talk to Anthony, I, 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 I see that Anthony is, is so much of his mommy, he's got a lot of her strength. He's got some of my personality that's sort of come out as he's gotten older. And, and I look at him and go, man, he's everything I wished I'd been. You know, I wanted to be like him. Anthony went to college and he's just living the life, man. And he's got all these friends. And I'm like, man, that's what I wanted in college. He has reproduced what Beth is. He's got her abilities and her knowledge and her, 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 her stamina in so many ways. We have another son. His name is Michael. That has more than reproduced me. Me and him are like clones. <laughs> He tells me stuff that's going on. I'm like, yeah, well, yeah. That's sort of what happens, boy. Unfortunately, he even looks like me a little bit. He doesn't like that, but he does. He's my clone. I have reproduced myself. I don't know what God's going to call my boys to do. But I know right now both of them are serving the Lord. And I'm believing that both of them will continue to serve the Lord. I know that Anthony is looking at a, a, a field in, in missions work, and, and uh, I, Michael's going to be speaking to the youth group here in, in, in some time coming up, and, and, and that, that, that excites Daddy. Oh, cool. I like that. I've reproduced myself in my, in my boy. But what about in the lives of other people? Who have you pre reproduced? I have a spiritual daughter in Oklahoma who serves the Lord with all her heart and all her mind. She's one of my spiritual children. She's so, such a child, I even call her my daughter. I reproduced my faith in her. I, I went to a, to a church in Cincinnati, Ohio, and there was a young girl there who was married now, and her and her husband were the youth pastors at the church in Cincinnati at the time. And after church, she had been in the hospital having one of their kids, and she had just got out. And after church, we were eating, and some of her kids came into the restaurant where we were eating. And she says, oh, I want you guys to meet them. She looked at her kids. This is Pastor Tommy. And these kids went, oh, you're Pastor Tommy? The Pastor Tommy? And I'm like, oh, I'm looking at Melissa going, the Pastor Tommy? What? Why have you told me? More than I had realized, I had poured my spirit into her. I had been her youth pastor. And now as she was in that role, she had carried and reproduced my spirit. Now I can give you a couple of examples where I've been able to read. I can tell you many, many, many stories where I failed. Who have you reproduced? Who have you reproduced? You need to find somebody and start pouring into them. You need to find somebody and start sharing into them. Showing them what God has done in your life. Let your story live on beyond you. Because that's what fruit does. Are you a leaf? Or are you fruit? Are you a leaf? Or are you fruit? I want to close this service with a time of prayer. You can pray in your seat. You can pray in the altars. I don't care. Here's what I want you to ask yourself. I want you to look at your heart. Have I been a leaf? Have I drank from the roots? But have I fed men? 
or have I been a fruit? If you've been a leaf, ask God to make you a fruit. If you've been a fruit, ask God to let you become more fruitful. Because if he comes to us and all he finds are leaves, he will wither us. Because we've been planted here to be fruit.